Hi, it's Jan from Melbourne Food Forest. Look at all the plot that we've just picked. Oh my gosh, this took a while. This evening, I wanna take you on a walk through our garden and show you some of the fruits that we're harvesting and enjoying and that are growing right now. So let's get started. strawberry grape vine growing along the chicken coop to give it shade and strawberry grapes taste like strawberry they're a real pop of juice quite different to your standard grapes this is only in its first year but I can't wait to have some of our own fruit because I've only tasted it at a friend's house and walking down this way we get to our uber abundant plot tree of which I was meant to spend today harvesting plots and you can see it's just a crazy number of plots on this small tree it's tightly pruned to fit into our food forest but yet it is so abundant we've already eaten a crazy amount of plots we've given heaps away and it feels like i haven't even done any picking on the tree as there's still so much good thing i'm still on holidays today because i've got to spend the rest of the time picking plots for those who don't know plots are a cross between plum and apricot with the plum heritage dominant hence they're called plots we've also got an aprium tree which is also a plum apricot cross but with apricot dominant and it looks much more like an apricot whereas this looks very much like a blood plum and tastes like a blood plum except it's much sweeter it's not as sour even when slightly unripe and uber productive i don't know if you can see all those plots but they're hundreds per branch and much more disease resistant so it's a great variety to grow by far one of our most productive fruit trees other than our established fig tree i would say this tree is about seven, eight years old now, but started producing from the first year that we got it. I'd highly recommend it. It's called a, a Flavor Rouge. Now this tree was fully netted to keep the birds out because they adore the fruit. I've taken it off now because we're gonna pick them all. They're getting really ripe and they will be made into jams and frozen and given away if you leave them on the tree too long they'll drop and rot so it's now time peak time to pick next up is our extremely productive babaco tree babaco is a cool climate cousin of papaya it's quite different tasting to papaya though but it's the best we can do down south here. It has been insanely productive on a tree that's no bigger than a twig, really. It's just a stem with fruit hanging off the bare stem. So dramatic looking. And you can see lots of babaco babies up there. This mama 
is carrying kilos and kilos of fruit. We have been eating one a day, giving them away, freezing them, and thinking of lots of creative ways to use them, including in smoothies and ice cream, fruit salads, when ripe, like this, when they're yellow, super, super sweet. To me, it tastes like lemonade. Some people say it tastes like champagne fruit, hence its other name. It's quite fizzy and super juicy. Each of these weigh close to a kilo. So this mama is carrying a lot of weight on her. Such a good productive fruit to have at this time of year. Our main peach tree, peaches are still quite little. This was grown from seed by my dad many years ago, but it actually produces really yummy peaches. So we look forward to these every year. And no, I didn't spray for peach leaf curl this year and the tree is looking pretty good. On the other side of the path to the peaches are our apples and pears. This is a pink lady variety of apple. They're still small, but getting there and getting a slight pink blush on them This variety is quite prone to apple scab, as you can see here. I may have to spray for it next year, but we'll see how it goes. Some of them are okay. And this is a Nashi pear that was just planted last year, so it hasn't started fruiting. And to the left of our Nashi pear is another apple. It's our snow white apple. It's a heritage variety again. I just loved the name. It's, it's meant to have white flesh just like Snow White and they're small lunchbox sized apples which sounded perfect for our kids because standard apples can be just too huge and they can't finish them. It's got beautiful red blush and white skin and flesh. Hiding behind our pretty hollyhock. And heading over this way is our Nashi pear. This one I've had for a few years but had to relocate it because it was in too shady a spot. So now we've got apple pear, apple pear down this alley. So pretty. I love their speckled skin. I don't know if you can see that. Nashi are, are our favourite variety of pear, hence I've planted two. And only dwarf varieties, of course, to keep them compact with lots of pruning. Another insanely productive fruit that just keeps on giving is pepinos. They produce fruit for us for most of the year in our temperate climate. They taste like rock melon. They're a cold climate rock melon. And when ripe, they generally get these purple stripes, but not always. And we've trained owls. It's actually been held in by a passion fruit all the way up this wall to save space and it's like a forest of fruit you've just got to hunt around in here oh there's some more I don't even know how much is hiding back here but we've been eating off this for most of this year and you can see their flowers they're a relative of tomato and eggplant in the Solanaceae family you can see that resemblance with the flower looks kind of like a potato flower and as I mentioned it's held in 
buy our banana passion fruit because the passion fruit is the climber and I don't know if it's got any fruit right now but we were eating them just at the end of spring um, you can see a flower banana passion fruit flower and there's probably some fruit hiding in here oh here it is this is a single plant all the way along our fence line and the flowers are so pretty so no doubt there's some fruit hiding in this forest of leaves here is our very neglected dragon fruit beginning to flower don't think it's going to produce any fruit because it's been so poorly looked after and just chucked somewhere. I've only just repotted it. But thought I'd show you anyway because the flowers are stunning. Such a pretty time of year. I'm going to try and focus on the fruit today and I'll do a separate tour of the flowers. So many beautiful things going on. Our productive fig tree is just gearing up for a bumper harvest again. This tree, we guess, is at least 70 years old. It's so big and it gives us way more fruit than we could ever dream to eat. So we generally don't bother netting this one. We just individually bag some of the lower fruit and share the rest with birds and other native wildlife this produces the sweetest purple figs it's an heirloom variety which needs another tree another fig tree also in our yard as a pollinator the other tree produces inedible figs and it's called a capri fig so these should be ready in about another month or so can't wait for fig season. This is our teeny tiny dwarf peach tree. I think I'm gonna to have to relocate it next year. It's in a pot, but this area has become way too shady as our food forest has developed. Still got some fruit, but I think it's gonna do a lot better if I move it to a sunnier location because it's in deep shade virtually the entire day but such beautiful yummy peaches mm. it's under the canopy of our grapefruit tree you can see lots of baby grapefruit here and the fig tree i just showed you it's so dense now that you can barely see the sky under this anymore And we've also got a dwarf Trixie here. Again, super shaded and will need to be moved. But in its first year, has got some fruit for us. Our pomegranate has produced its first flush of fruit. I find that it usually produces a couple of flushes a year. This first batch has set and there's another flower on the way and the fruit forms just behind it. This becomes the fruit. And against the fence here, this is one of our other heritage plums I think it's a mariposa have to bag all of these or the rats and or possums and or birds get to them all and over here is our aprium apricot plum cross with apricot dominant and these are the best tasting fruit they're called cotton candy here are some of the ripe cotton candy. 
They're so yum. The light pink blush. And down here under the canopy of the fig tree is our wild jungle section. It's very much survival of the fittest. These don't get watered or looked after in any way. And you can see all our Cape gooseberries do really well in these shady and neglected conditions. They give us lots of fruit. Let me see if I can grab one for you. Cape gooseberries should only be eaten after they've fallen off the vine. They need to be fully ripe or they can be a little toxic. So these on the ground, my gosh, I'm shocked the kids haven't found these, but these are ready to eat. And they've got a lolly-like wrapper, which you peel open. To reveal these golden little balls of joy inside. They should only be eaten when orange like this. And they taste like a cross between tomato and passion fruit. Sounds a bit odd, but it's actually quite yummy. They're like a lolly for children. <laughs> There's a whole heap down here to harvest. You can see those and um, the pretty lanterns that hang on this plant. This is one of the toughest plants. It can get weedy. As you can see, it's taken over this entire area under the fig tree. But hey, I'm not complaining. Gives us fruit, doesn't need watering, and is a beautiful ground cover. grapefruit on the tree from last season but mostly we're waiting for these babies of which there are so many to ripen and citrus ripen over winter look at the pretty chicory flowers such a crazy color okay better not get distracted again back to the fruit this is our jujube tree which is a tree from my childhood as my grandma grew it when I used to live in Beijing in a courtyard. We didn't have much else but we had a walnut and a jujube. It's still in a pot. Hi Panda. Still in a pot but so productive. One of the most drought tolerant, salt tolerant and tolerant of our scorching summers. So sitting in a small pot against a hot reflective wall and gets full western afternoon sun and still looks amazing and so productive. Tastes like a sweet apple and can also be left to dry like a date. Really delicious and versatile. Our berries all along this northern wall, completely shaded out of our food forest, have mostly finished their first crop, but most are dual cropping. So we'll get an autumn harvest if things go well. And you can see my berry video if you wanna see all the yummy berries that I've got growing and I'll add a link above. These are our avocado trees. We've got 
three of them. They keep getting decimated by possums. So you can see this one's been eaten bare. I see this as the sacrificial avocado because they've actually left this one alone. So hopefully we get some fruit off this because the possum decimated it about seven years ago and it's only just recovered in the past couple of years. And over here, we've got our mandarin trees, which are covered in fruit come winter. Currently, tiny baby mandarins. Looks like we're in for a good harvest this winter too, since we've improved our soil management practices and upped our companion planting. Here we've got some blueberries. We've had a few ripe ones, but the bulk of this variety is still to come. Lots of fruit this year on this plant. This is a maru, which I have to say is one of the nicest tasting blueberries. So the other ones we have a sunshine blue, a blue rose, which I find quite sour. The sunshine blue is small. These are big and sweet. We've also got three other varieties, a Nui and I've forgotten the names of the others, but they're all new to us this year. But this is the first one to give us a really good crop. Growing in a pot course to help with the acidic conditions that they need to thrive. Tangelo, we have our first few on the way. Now these were meant to be the Mineola the variety that have the nipple because that's what I love about the Tangelos is their distinctive nipple. But I am not seeing any nipples just yet. So if someone knows, do, do the nipple variety form them only at the end or should I be seeing them already during the season? Because I hope I haven't been sold the wrong one, but I'm sure it'll be delicious anyway. Tangelo are one of the quickest producing citruses, so they have the shortest time from baby fruit to ripe fruit. Hence, these are changing colour already and we're nowhere near winter is pretty cool so grow lots of different varieties so you get a continual harvest through the year another citrus our variegated kumquat how pretty are the leaves I go gaga over variegation pretty leaves and the fruit are also variegated they look like boiled candy irresistible to our kids at least and such a pretty tree because it's always covered in fruit at Christmas time this is a Chatuk mulberry I'm not sure if there's anything else left on it oh there's still a few more that waiting to ripen if you watch our berry video you'll see how we can get two harvests out of this each year a spring harvest and a smaller autumn harvest so yummy and walking over here I'm not sure if this counts as a fruit but why not because I'm so excited we got our first few by few I mean two um, almonds this year and this is a dwarf almond tree that only grows to two meters tall so cute and furry can't wait to try them and in the shady areas under this gigantic ornamental pear tree our alpine strawberries which thrive in the shade flourish here the kids pick off this every single day they're tiny but they're like the essence of strawberry they pack a punch 
and they love shade. Oh, I've also spotted one of the white varieties here. This is a Siberian white strawberry, which tastes like bubble gum. So cool. And there's a bit more of these down the path actually, so I'll show you. Here are more of the Siberian white strawberries. And being white, they're ignored by birds, but not by children who have really gone through this pretty thoroughly. I can't find any more fruit on it. A couple here and there. Again, shade loving and just such a unique pop of flavour. And these are some of your standard strawberry. I'm not even sure what variety it is because we've had these for so many years, which the kids have really picked bare. <laughs> we hardly get to taste them. Behind this mass of flowers is our white sapote hiding here. It's also known as vanilla pudding fruit. It's meant to be one of the yummiest things. This was just planted here in this spot over winter. It's double in size since then and I did spot some flowers but I don't think there's any fruit on it just yet. Really pretty evergreen tree. And this is its counterpart, black sapote. You can see some flowers here. I doubt it's going to fruit because it's still in a pot and it's been a little neglected because it got sunburnt. I found that the black sapote really doesn't like scorching sun. It's an understory tree in a food forest so I'm going to give it more shelter from now on. But it's got some flowers. It's promising. This is our newly espaliered golden delicious apple wasn't expecting any fruit off it as it's on its own in the front yard with no pollinators but clearly the bees have been moving between the front and back yard because I don't think any of our neighbours have apple trees maybe crab apple but loaded with fruit in this terrible soil under massive pine trees just impressed at how resilient apples are it's going to look so striking once it's established, but already looking pretty in its first year. So much fruit. And I just love how efficient the spallering is. It takes up no space at all. so productive 